All right, final, finally, we're going to apply our Fourier series into analyze the circuit. And how is that done? We're going to use that alternative form of our Fourier series with the amplitude and the phase of our Fourier coefficients. And what we're going to do is we're going to study each component acting alone. So each of these uh, sinusoidal waveforms acting into your circuit. And then we're going to use super superposition. So we add the result at the end of the contribution of each component acting alone in the system. All right, so we're going to have a set of steps that we're going to apply. Step number one, we're going to find the Fourier series of the input in that alternative form. Then we're going to analyze the circuit in DC. Then we analyze the circuit in AC. And then we find the Fourier series terms. So this is where we apply that superposition part. And then at last, we're going to plot and simulate our answer. All right, so we have our signal here. We're going to apply the sawtooth wave into this um, LR circuit. So an inductor and a resistor connected in series. And the information that we have regarding this signal, it's a volt peak to peak of 20 volts, a 50 ohm resistor, a 40 micro -Henry's inductor. And we're going to have a one mega radians per second of our frequency. And we're going to try to find the current that flows through this circuit. And we're going to focus on the first four non-zero terms of our Fourier series. So our step number one is to apply the Fourier series of the input in that alternative form. So this is the equation that we are focusing on. And we're going to use a table to find the Fourier coefficients of our sawtooth. And we have the following Fourier coefficients. So notice that we don't have any a n, we only have b of n coefficients. And in this case, we have a DC component that is related with your amplitude divided by two. So let's plug some values here and we get a DC component of 10 and a n is equal to zero and our b n is minus 20 over n pi. All right, so now let's go and plug these into that amplitude and phase representation. So amplitude you get 20 over n pi and phase you get 90 degrees. So how do I get to 90 degrees? I have my bn, which is a negative number divided by zero. I'm going to plot this arc tangent minus one here on the top and notice that a negative number divided by zero goes to minus infinite, which is going to converge to minus 90 degrees. So minus 90 with that minus gives you a positive 90 degrees. All right, I'm going to plug this a n and 90 into your alternative form and you get this expression and we are done from for step number one. Now, step number two, we are going to analyze the circuit um, in DC. So we are interested in our current and we know the DC component of our input signal, which is 10 volts. So DC things are uh, fairly easy to analyze. Our inductor becomes a short circuit. So if you don't recall why it's a short circuit, remember that the voltage across an inductor is equal to L times D I D T or the current that flows through the inductor, the derivative of that. So in DC, the derivative is zero. That means that the voltage across the inductor is zero. So this potential is the same as that one. So a short circuit. And now it's simple Ohm's law, 10 divided by R gives you um, a DC current of 0 0.2 amps. All right, step number three, we're going to analyze our circuit in AC. All right, in order to do that, our now we are interested on this part over here, our, our IN, we're going to apply the same techniques as we use for the Laplace domain. So we're going to find the respective impedances. For inductors, we do S times L. For uh, capacitors, we do one over SC and resistors becomes just R. And in this case, we only have an inductor and resistor. So we get S times 40 micro and a ZR of 50. We place that into our circuit. And now I can treat this as a normal resistive circuit and I can find uh, what we call the transfer function, our current, just applying Ohm's law. So the voltage divided by the equivalent resistance, in this case, 50 plus S40 micro. And now, so notice that I'm still in Laplace, but I'm, I want to go to this frequency domain. I'm going to substitute my S for J omega M. And this is only true for 
a set of conditions that that are outside of the scope of this video and we're just going to assume that everything is fine we can apply this substitution and we move on and i'll do a video later on about this set of conditions that allow us to do this substitution so if i do that i get jn40 so notice here that i already have my omega which is one mega radians per second multiplied by the 40 micro henrys and i get this part over here and this is your signal the Fourier series that we just found and I'm going to represent that sinusoidal function in polar form so I have my amplitude and my phase represented here now this is a simple complex number and all I need to do is to divide these two complex numbers so I find an amplitude which is this one is already in polar form so I do this amplitude divided by the amplitude of my uh, denominator complex number which is this one and the phase because I'm dividing two complex numbers I just do the subtraction of the phases so 90 minus the phase of these complex number all right and I get the following current the 0 0.2 DC component plus the summation of that I n and those phases all right I finished step number three and step number four is to find the Fourier series terms so I got my current, all I need to do is now substitute n equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so forth and so on, for as many terms as I need. In our case, we want to find the first four non-zero terms. So the first one, it's just your DC component, 0 0.2, then n equal to 1, and I get this. So I'm literally just substituting n equal to 1 over here and computing um, the rest of the numbers and then equal n equal to 2 and then n equal to 3 and now all I need to do is to apply superposition so add all those values together and you get your i of t in this form so how do I know now that this is going on the right direction I'm going to do my final step step number five which is plot and simulate my answer I'm going to use Desmos and I'm going to plot the information and see what I get Alright, so I extract these from Desmos and I'm plotting here just two uh, solutions, one with the four terms, the first four non-zero terms, which is in blue, and then another one with 50 terms, so more terms, you get a better approximation of your final answer. So now let's look at uh, Falstad, let's simulate these in Falstad and see what we get. All right, then we get the following uh, current. So here in red, you have the current and you can see that it's pretty similar to what we just plot on Desmos. And that tells you that your answer is probably on the right direction.